Welcome to the next episode of the Indigenous Entrepreneurs Network, where uh, I get the opportunity to interview exciting Indigenous people up to big things, starting and running businesses in the Lower Mainland. So my name is Laura Fridvinson, and I am the owner-operator of Activate Corporate Relations and Training. And today I get the pleasure of speaking with another very exciting Indigenous entrepreneur, by the name of Curtis Thomas of Warrior Plumbing. And Curtis has been uh, running his business for some time and I just recently was introduced to him. So I thought it would be great to hear a little bit about his story and how he got started. And just, yeah, what, can you tell us a little bit about you and your business, Curtis? Uh, yeah, first of all, uh, nice to meet you, Loa, and thank you for having me today. Um, I'm happy to be here. Uh, my business is uh, Warrior Plumbing and I started it's uh, in about 2010 and um, the history how I got started is really I had uh, done my whole uh, plumbing apprenticeship working for the same company for a number of years and uh, you know it was great I ended up getting my certification with the company and then it was just before the Olympics the construction industry kind of came to a crashing halt and I got laid off for the first time in six years uh, and it got me thinking, what am I going to do? Because I hadn't really been in that situation before. And um, I was very lucky that uh, the people I grew up with and within my network, uh, lots of people were already in construction and nobody really seemed to be doing plumbing. So um, uh, within a matter of two to three months, uh, I started to pick up work, driving around in my uh, 2014 Dodge Dakota uh, kind of doing the, the one, one man show, uh, doing yeah. all sorts of jobs, uh, from service jobs to, uh, smaller kitchen and bathroom renovations. And, um, one of my friends in particular, uh, he's a successful, um, businessman and, uh, he was giving me a majority of my work and it came to a point where he said, Curtis, you need to start your own business because up until then I was just kind of doing cash jobs and uh, oh. I was kind of like afraid of it, right? I was like, um, I don't know, man. And, and he really pushed me in the right direction. He's like, what are you afraid of? And it's kind of, I was afraid of the unknown, right? Mm. Um, but but he, 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 I still, he still is a um, big part of my life today and uh, still one of my best friends. And he said, you're already doing it. Yeah. He said, I have this job for twenty thousand dollars and I can't give you cash for it. So here are your options. You go and start your own business or you don't take this job. And he said, whatever you need, I can help you, but uh you're already running your own business and, and I really think you should do it. So that's basically what I did. Um I think it was March two thousand ten I went to the Chamber of Commerce in uh, North Vancouver and I officially registered my business as a sole proprietorship. Oh, good for you. And then uh that's where it all started kind of. Um Oh. And, and just running around all over the place at my by myself at first, and um, I have a good story for my first employee. So uh, my 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 first cousin, his name's Dave Thomas, and oh, yeah. uh, is one year younger than me. So our dads are brothers, and they're very close in age too. So Dave and I kind of grew up as brothers, and Dave also got into the plumbing industry. So it came to a point in my career where I just had so much going on and I needed some help. And I'd heard uh, that Dave maybe had been laid off from his company. So I phoned him up. Dave picked up the phone call and I said, hey, Dave, what are you up to? He said, oh, I'm just doing something around the house. He said, what's up? And I said, uh, I need to hire somebody for my company. Are you interested? He goes, oh, wow. Um, yeah, sure. When should I start? And I said, I'll be there in 20 minutes. <laughs> That's he said, amazing. He said, are you serious? And I said, yeah, I'm serious. If you're really interested, I could use you today and then keep you busy, I hope, for, for, the, for the future. And he said, yeah, that's awesome. So that's, that's it. So Dave and I, yeah, we, we, uh, Dave still works for me. He's one of my top guys. Um, and how and many just, employees do you have? I currently have um, 12 employees. Wow. Yeah. I just hired uh, yesterday. I just hired my first uh, office manager slash bookkeeper. Oh, fantastic. So it's the first time I'm having somebody come in who isn't somebody working in the field, which is uh, um, a bit of a different process. I took it a little more seriously 
uh, yeah. through the whole interview process and um um, yeah, it worked out well. I found a great candidate who's going to start uh, May 19th, actually. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, it yeah. sounds like your business has, has started off small and you had, did you know that it was going to end up being a lot more than a sole proprietorship? Did you have that vision or how did you, you and Dave, and then did you think that was going to be uh, kind uh, of the extent of your um, employee situation or did you always want to go bigger? You know what? Um, that is a good question. So there is a bit more background uh, to my company, I guess, that I shouldn't leave out because it's kind of come full circle now. Okay. So the Slayer Tooth Nation has their own economic development department right. called Takai Developments, who Dennis works for. Right. Uh, my mother is actually their receptionist and uh, administrative assistant and has been oh. there for, for since they started, 25 years or something. So I was at a point, I, I was, uh, I struggled through high school. I actually got kicked mm -hmm. out of school in grade 10 and uh, had to come back and redo it. Yeah. So I I'd really uh, was there to play sports and socialize and, and really had a hard time thinking about my future and kind of came out of high school, you know, I always had jobs. I was always working, but they were just jobs. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily a career. Right. And I came to a point when I was about uh, 20. 21, 22, and I felt like I needed to think about a career. Mm. And I had uh, some uncles that were involved in Takai development, and uh, one of them is the late Chief Leonard George, and the other one is uh, Matt Thomas. He's currently the president of our economic development, and um, they're my uncles, so they cared about me. And uh, at that time, our nation was doing all of these um, brand new condo. Um, 100 unit developments so they had all sorts of trades coming in through the nation and, and doing work and they asked me is there anything that you'd be interested in over at one of our big job sites and uh, I thought about it and um, I understood that plumbing most likely you're gonna have a roof over your head yes exactly <laughs> out of the elements that never that is always in vogue right no yeah. matter what the economy is doing plumbing is always needed yeah so there yeah so in my mind there's the top three trades uh, there's uh, carpentry plumbing and yeah. electrical so sure. carpentry they spend a lot of their time outside yes in the elements yeah <laughs> yeah electric electricians if they mess something up they get electrocuted yeah exactly so i said hey i don't mind <laughs> getting a little what, what little wet so so that they opened a door for me. They got me an interview and uh, with the company I ended up working for for six years and doing my whole apprenticeship with. Oh, and uh, I even um, worked on those big developments within my nation for a couple of years doing my apprenticeship. And, and they would always check in on me, uh, Matt and Leonard, and they would say, you know, how's it going? You know, we're really proud of you to, oh, to be, yeah. be doing your training. And, and you, you know, you stuck out for a year and then, you know, you stuck out for three years and, and then when I was soon to be getting my, my certification, they were saying, well, one day you're going to have your own company and you're going to be over here. You're going to be doing these big projects. And at the time I was, I was young and, and still scared of the big world. Right. And uh, <laughs> sure. I, I just felt it was so far fetched. Right. I was like, wow. Oh, I don't know. But fast forward it to 2020 and yes, I am. I'm actually doing Incredible. the big projects over here on our reserve. Um, I've wow, got, uh, uh, you know, we just uh, are about to finish uh, 175 townhomes since uh, June Holy. of June of 2017, and um, yeah, so I grew my company from just myself up to 12 guys, and uh, a majority of my um, installers are First Nations. Oh, that's great! Yeah, eight out of eleven. Our uh, status fantastic. holding First Nations, and um, five out of the eight are from the Soviet Nation. So, oh wow! Um, here and I am. I, I have my own company, and you know we did about two point two million dollars in revenue last last year. And um, oh, congratulations! And still continuing. Thank you very much. I'm still continuing to try to grow. And um, part of my business plan is to always um, create opportunities for my nation because I think it really is important to me. Um, I had a few, nice. few opportunities that came through 
my mentors and came through my nation and uh now I'm in a position where I can do that for other people and oh, wow. and that will never change for me that's really important oh that's incredible what an inspiring story you have Kurt and it's it's so obvious that your passion is in not only building a, a great business where you can uh, provide people with quality um, ser plumbing services, but also that you are um, helping to lift up and support others. And I think that that, um, being, being able to build a business with that as your foundation is so rewarding and inspiring, inspiring to others as well. And you know, I hope that a lot of the youth in Indigenous youth watch this and hear about your story because it, you know, it just really shows that especially having people that believe in you and then knowing, believing in yourself ultimately and taking those next steps, um, even if you don't know where they're going to lead, it, it does open doors and it ends up, you know, bringing you to a place where you, you never could have imagined. Right, it's just about going for it though. And I think that a lot of people, um, indigenous and non-indigenous, don't think about starting a business or taking that next step because of fear. And you know, sometimes you just have to push through that fear and watch what happens because it's um, amazing things. Like I just, I love your story. I'm, I'm so glad that you came to share it today. So no. it's incredible. <laughs> well, I appreciate that and I can, I could comment that, you know, fear is a real thing. And um, yeah. I still have situations where I feel fear within my business too, when you have uh, your sure. payroll is X amount of per month totally. and, and things like this. But um, Absolutely. I think a big part of learning is, is um, being determined and understanding that you're going to go through this unknown process. Mm -hmm. And that's where the real learning comes from. And you're going to figure it, it out. You're going to figure it out and you yeah. don't have to know everything yourself and, and don't yeah. be afraid to, reach out to others who know this totally. and, and surround yourself with with the people you need and, and you just have to because uh, you have to ask yeah. for that help and there's always people willing to help you for sure absolutely hands down and even if somebody doesn't necessarily have any like family members or anybody in their immediate um environment read, get books on on read about people who are doing what they want to do and learn from you know reach out to people maybe if they don't even know them like if somebody was to watch this video and be inspired by your story and even just called to, to, to say, hi, Kurt, like I saw your video and could you just give me a little bit of, um, uh, you know, tell me a little bit more about what you did because I'm interested in entrepreneurship. Oh, and I'm sure you'd be more than happy to take a five minute call to help someone out that way. So it, it really is about reaching out um, and not trying to do it all by yourself. You know, and I think mentorship is a big part of that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, if anybody watching this video ever wants to call me, my I always answer my phone. <laughs> I've always got uh, oh. 10 minutes to help other people for sure. <laughs> I know. Well, you can tell that that's definitely a part of who you are. Yeah. So did you, to fund your business, did you get any financial help? Um, from the beginning? No. No? No, from the beginning, it was all just um, cash flow. Wow. Good for yeah. you. That is cash not flow. easy to do. No, for sure. Uh, I did um, in 2017 when I made that transition into the multifamily um, residential big projects. I did. I, I had to look for funding. Um, so I did. I had a private investor who lent me some money. And I also got some funding through um, TAC. Uh, yeah, oh, good. You did. Aboriginal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, funding. They, They're uh, wonderful. I got uh, some some grant money and some loans through them. So, um, oh, great! You're able yeah. To have that. Cool. Yeah. And have you done any business, any training, any kind of marketing or sales training or anything like that? Um, I work. I am currently working with a business coaching program that oh, I started okay. work, nice. working with in May of 2017. Okay. Uh, they're yeah. called the Breakthrough Academy, and uh, okay. cool. it started off locally and. Um, they specialize in working with trades and service people, okay. uh, service industry companies. So it's really, the content is, is, is everything you need to know. Um, they want you to have three options in two to three years is to um, be able to sell your business, be able to franchise your business, oh. or be able to step away from the day to day. So it's all Very about nice. uh, implementation, Bro. systems, organization, documentation, 
the full way through from understanding your budget all the way to your, you know, um, identifying uh, key employees, um, recruiting, mm-hmm. marketing, sales tracking. That's fantastic. Yeah. And it's really important as a, as a business owner too, to constantly be learning how, and, and growing, right? Both professionally and personally, because I think that, you know, as a entrepreneur, we face a lot of challenges and, and a, a lot of risks we have to take. So it's important that we arm ourselves with as many tools as we possibly can to make that process a little bit easier and a little less stressful. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, I'm, I'm a plumber and a gas fitter by trade and, yeah. um, I built my business due to my, um, technical, um, strengths, skills, for sure. technical yeah. skills. And also I think that I'm very approachable and I get along with people. So if, if you, if you're good technically uh-huh. and you get along with people, it seems to work wonders, especially yeah. in the construction industry. Sure. Um, but I knew when I started doing over a million dollars in revenue that I really need to take things seriously as a business and, and yeah. understand that uh, one to 2% on my bottom line it can mm-hmm. be a large number. And um, yeah. working with that business business coaching program, it's really opened up my eyes to things I never could have got to on my own, mm-hmm. uh, you know, about working on my business and not necessarily in it. In it, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And what would you, so what would you say, what kind of advice would you give to, others who are thinking about going into business for themselves, what would you, if somebody said to you, Kurt, I have an idea, I have a product or a service idea, and um, I'm not sure, you know, if I could do it, I'm not sure where to start, like, what would be your advice? Um, have confidence. If, if you want, if you want it bad enough, you can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, have a vision. Yes. It starts with a vision, right? And, totally. Um, when you can dream up that vision, you can really start to write things down and, and figure out the steps to get to that vision. And if you can break it down into steps, it seems more manageable. And oh, um, sure. you can kind of map out at certain points and in certain steps where you're going to need outside help or if you're going to need some funding. Um, mm-hmm. I just think don't take no for an answer if anybody tells you you can't do it. You have to push through that and you have to be determined because when you're a business owner, nobody's going to do it for you. Mm. Um, that is so true. I hear, I hear a cute little baby in the background. My apologies. Is that yours? My, my <laughs> oh, no, and, daughter. She's just oh, waking up cute. from a nap. <laughs> oh, so sweet. So you're a dad of a little a one and you're a business owner. Oh yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You have yeah, two babies. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> That's Absolutely. fantastic. And so what is your, speaking of vision, what is your vision for, for Warrior Plumbing for the next, say, three to five years? Like, what do you foresee? Are you going to continue to grow it? Do you want to sell it? Like, what, yeah, what do you want? Uh, so my BHAG, my big, hairy, audacious goal. Ah, I like it. Yeah. For five years was to do $5 million in revenue. Um, so continue to grow, but, uh, grow not too fast, grow in a manageable fashion. So, um, 2020 is my own personal goal is the year of implementation where I really, um, uh, do the same amount of revenue I did in 2019, but do it better. So really focus right. on that foundation, that structure, yeah. that organization, right. and hopefully the year of 2021, will be the year of expansion. So Love I want, it. I want to continue to grow and um, take advantage of opportunities that are going to come my way. Uh, well, how can people reach you if they want to reach you? What's the best way? Uh, just email Kurt at warriorplumbing.ca is always best. Okay. And do you have a Facebook page? I do have a Facebook page, yes, and also an Instagram page. Okay. Excellent. Under Warrior Plumbing, I'm guessing? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, Kurt, thanks again. Have a wonderful day. Okay, Loa. You too. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Yes. Okay, bye. bye.